So if I want to go back and visit wounds and trauma, how do I do that in a healthy way so that I'm not constantly living in the past, constantly identifying with my wounded, traumatized child, and then using that to manipulate people? You know, we don't look back to blame. Most parents do the best they can. Um, we look back to explain. And once you understand a wound, then you have the ability, when you really see what the injury is, then you have a clear diagnosis. I'm very excited to be talking with you right now because I know I'm gonna go home a changed man. My <laughs> wife is gonna look at me and she's gonna say, who are you and what did you do with my husband? <laughs> um, you talk about different love styles in your book and I can't wait to get into these. What does an avoider look like? Uh, how do they get that way and what really gets under their skin? Well, I'll answer that because I was the avoider. You were the avoider. I've grown out of that style, but that's definitely where I spent the first 15 years of our marriage and as a parent. And the avoider comes from a home where there, it's more about task and mastery and there's little comfort, there's little emotional connection, there's no deep conversation. And so the avoider learns to be independent, self-sufficient. They're more interested in tasks than when someone's emotional or needy. They just don't know what to do because nobody was able to do something for them in that place. So they, they don't offer comfort, they don't receive comfort well. And what will really get under the skin of an avoider is someone who is needy and crying or emotional or angry and upset and they just don't know what to do. Yeah. And so their spouse feels like, you know, you're, you're stonewalling me or you're, you're not helping me out here. And the truth is they don't have enough experience of connection to even know what they're missing. And so they, they are confused by what people want and often have a spouse who complains, you know, my husband doesn't really need me or my wife doesn't really seem to connect with me in any way that's emotional. And yeah. they don't realize that that's really a root foundation of how they grew up. Th there's another style that you call a pleaser. Um, how are they different and how might people become pleasers? Well, they're very similar to the avoider in that they are not in touch with their feelings. They do not like conflict or any kind of confrontation of mm. any type. Mm -hmm. They typically are your soft serve uh, ice cream people where they wanna make it very nice and easy. And so really, I wasn't very honest, A, with myself or B, with K. Uh, I would say I was doing fine as well. Were you a pleaser? I was. And I was, but I was basically afraid inside to, you know, make the waters ripple. I was afraid to cause any kind of dissension. And I had a weak level of anger and I had a hard time saying no, you know, no, the inability to say no because I wanted to make you happy. So there is a lot of disingenuousness. Uh, I didn't know myself well on the inside. And um, as a result, it was, it, it caused me to be anxious around her because I needed more attention to settle that anxiety. I don't any longer when I realized it was all inside of me. If you're a vacillator, what does that mean? Uh, do, do they generally get upset in a different way? You know, vacillators usually come from homes where there's inconsistent connection, and so they're often disappointed and waiting for time and attention from a parent. So dating is a great period for the vacillator because there's a lot of connection, there's a lot of intensity, there's a lot of, um, you know, togetherness. But vacillators are really um, upset when they have to wait. They become upset. They waited as kids for time and attention, and so when you know, you have kids and you have jobs and they're waiting for time and attention. Mm -hmm. um, they're on a quest for that kind of constant, intense connection they missed as kids. They want, you want you there all the time making contact. And so they're disappointed a lot because that isn't real life. You can't make that much connection. But they don't realize that they're, the wound is underneath. So. Avoiders manage stress by detaching. Pleasers manage it by being nice. Fast leaders protest. They're the protesters. So they'll tell you what's wrong, what you need to do, and how you need to change it, not realizing that there's a wound inside of abandonment driving that need for intense connection. What about a controller? Does a controller have a different experience in their childhood? 
Controllers and victims come from a home that we call chaotic or disorganized. And the chaotic disorganized home is a place where the child is stuck in a place where there is fright without any solutions. So the, the home is dangerous. There is addiction here. There is abuse. There is neglect. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a home where many children grow up and the church is full of people mm -hmm. that come to Christ, but this is their history. And so what happens with this individual is they will tend to gravitate toward one or, or two or the other uh, propensities. One is to be highly controlling of their environment mm. because they want predictability. They want no surprises. They don't want anything to startle them or be dangerous to them. So they control their world very rigidly. The victim, on the other hand, has learned to tolerate the intolerable their whole life because they want to stay under the radar and try and dodge all the mm -hmm. things that are going on in the home. And so when they walk into adulthood, they remain or retain that role of the victim where they are easily taken advantage of. They don't have an adult voice. These types of people often also dissociate when they're under stress or when they're in a, a, a place where they're frightened they'll basically disconnect from the experience mm -hmm. and not, really not be present. They look like they're there, but they're really not. And so these are some of the things that we encounter with people that have had severe backgrounds. Wow, this is, this is just fascinating. We've talked about the avoider, we've talked about the pleaser, the vacillator, now the controller and the victim. Uh, what is the secure connector? Mm -hmm. The Secure Connector is one of those fortunate people who had parents who really knew how to emotionally connect. They were good at comfort. They were good at listening. So they, they made their child feel safe and secure and seen. And they were able to adapt to different stages and ages. So that person grows into adulthood with a lot of great skills. They're good listeners. They know how to be close, but they know how to give you space. Um, they are very good at um, helping uh, see when someone needs comfort or when someone needs um, attention, but they're not afraid to give you some um, room to be yourself. They're just uh, good at helping people grow in a way that really helps them later on in their life. They manage stress well. So the Secure Connector is sort of the goal. It's like where we're going right. um, to heal from these wounds and our sanctification journey was very different. I had to learn to know what I felt, have uh, awareness of feelings and move towards him and allow myself to need him. He had to learn to separate and not follow me around and ask me how I was all the time. So I had to learn to be okay by myself. Yeah. That's right. Is it possible to have more than one style in the way we love one another? You know, it, it is possible. Um, we find people from traumatic homes relate almost to all of these. And these are all coping mechanisms, how we handle a lack of emotional connection. So um, when, you know, the, the traumatized people say, well, I, they probably tried it all. We just say, start with the thing you do the most in the relationship you most want to change. Um, but I was definitely an avoider with him, a bit more of a pleaser um, with my friends. He's a pleaser all pretty much with everyone and everybody. Was. Was, good point. So once we identify, hey, I think I understand now why I'm reacting the way that I am in this relationship, the way I'm coping with stress in an unhealthy way, how then do we begin to move toward that secure connector style? Well, for the avoider, they really have to learn what they feel. They have to, I needed a feeling word list. I could not just come up with a feeling. I had to look at a list of words and say, oh, maybe it's this one. I oh. actually prayed for God to give me my tears back. Pleasers need to learn to separate, be, be able to be angry, be able to say no. Vacillators need to learn to get sad instead of mad, integrate good and bad. You know, it's, you're either all good or you're all bad. Um, and they need to learn that every day is both good and bad and that the reactivity and the disappointment is um, bigger than it needs to be. It's bigger because of their history. We carry all of 
our birthdays inside of us and those mm -hmm. experiences from our entire life are still inside of us. And empathy is a very important place for the controller and the victim. Yeah, they'll go. smile when telling you a really painful story. Mm -hmm. They'll joke about it and say, oh, yeah, well, I, it, it, I survived. It was, it's fine now. And they're just very cut off. Tra people with trauma are often very cut off from the reality of their childhood. Right. So the comfort circle, which is the last part of our book, is the solution for healing and growing. Okay. It has th four biblical positions. One, to be self-aware and describe your inner feelings. Like God does, he describes his emotions from Genesis to Revelation. Then to speak the truth and love one to another. Mm -hmm. Then to learn to listen and ask more questions about what does that mean? What else do you to feel? To be curious instead of defensive. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then lastly, to comfort one another, which the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, to learn to then provide comfort for whatever the experience of the speaker is. And we learn to listen to each other and have great conversations. And it was something we had to learn to do because we didn't learn it in our early childhood. Mm -hmm. So if I wanna go back and visit wounds and trauma, how do I do that in a healthy way so that I'm not constantly living in the past, constantly identifying with my wounded, traumatized child, and then using that to manipulate people? You know, we don't look back to blame. Most parents do the best they can. Um, we look back to explain. And once you understand a wound, mm. then you have the ability, when you really see what the injury is, then you have a clear diagnosis. You know, someone who wants to change and grow is gonna use that information to really change. Uh, the victim or the person who acts like, well, poor me, uses the information to continue to wallow in their yeah. wounds. And that's never the goal. That's not what Christ wants. He wants us to grow towards maturity and towards um, looking more like, loving more effectively. We don't understand the New Testament unless we understand the Old Testament. So God has, got a, God has got a history, and the New Testament wouldn't make any sense if we didn't understand that history. So to have an autobiographical sketch of yourself, to understand all of the impactful times in my life for good and for bad is really important to have this autobiographical sketch so I can know why I do what I do. Yeah. I really like what you're saying, and I love knowing that you're interpreting all of this through a biblical lens because it would be really easy for people to go and say, well, this is the story of what happened to you and because you were adopted, or that, that's why you've got these attachment issues and abandonment issues and therefore you're justified in how you feel and the things that you're saying and treating people, but you're saying, no, 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 no. Let's go back and remember that God's working all things together for good for those who love him. He's the author of your story and this is all heading toward victory and uh, health and character and faith. And we're not gonna use the past to complain, but maybe to explain and to, and, change. And to change. Can you give an example of a great action step a good takeaway that would begin to send us moving in the right direction? Yes, I can. We ask a question in the first chapter of our book, do you have a memory of comfort during your childhood where a parent saw you were upset, they came to you, they asked you what you felt, they gave you an opportunity to explore and put words to what was inside of you, and you can say you left that experience feeling relief. If you have a lot of those kinds of memories, then you're gonna connect people to a place I can go to get comfort and help. If you don't have those kind of memories, which many people don't, you're not going to seek out a person when you're stressed and you're not okay. Mm. You're gonna find other ways to cope that don't, don't need a personal touch. Which ignores your spouse. Right. Wow. So if, if as a kid, there was nobody I could go to for comfort, I just went to my peanut butter and jelly sandwich, or I went to the TV or to my video games, right. or I went to something that was uh, addictive, that can follow through into my marriage. You will do Absolutely. that as an adult. Right. Yeah. Yeah, we become very good at the things we practice, and if we're practicing them from childhood, we That's become right. experts in That's our marriage. That's exactly right. That's Train a good up point. a child in the way which he should go, and when he's old, he won't depart from it. That's great, I love that. Where can people find more information about your work? They can go to howwelove.com, the name of our book, howwelove.com, and find out all about their attachment style. They can take a quiz, and they can find out about everything we said today there. This is great. 
I feel a little bit more like a secure connector after having talked with you. I th we'll see if my wife confirms this when I, when I get home. <laughs>